This is Charles. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing this preheater. It's a Godak model number 853. Uh, it is a 600 watts machine. So I've been using it for almost two months. It would go around 100 to 120 dollars. However, I was lucky I got it at a very cheap price. This is a good tool for sure. If you do a lot of motherboard chip level replacement, basically we're dealing with big chips like EC, like processors and chipset this is a must have and there are other companies who have preheaters but they are quite expensive yeah and this is a china product made by godak and it's really doing the job so today i'm going to try to change a chipset over a motherboard using this preheater you know when you are dealing with such chips on the motherboards relying on the uh, soldering or workstation alone is not efficient because these motherboards that they are designed recently are designed in a way that they absorb a lot of heat so when you are applying heat on one side of the motherboard to take out a bigger chip it becomes very hard and you're either going to spoil the chip or burn the motherboard until it changes color so when you apply heat on both sides like you have a preheater here where you supply heat from the bottom and you have a workstation here where you use your bro your brewer to supply heat on top it becomes easily to replace and change these chips so and this one goes up to 500 uh, temperature it doesn't have a sensor you automatically have to to set up you use these buttons to set up up and even sit down and uh, it actually comes with these handles these are used in between like for holding up if you have a, a small motherboard you can put it here and adjust and lock it up somewhere however me i took off these things i you can disassemble and take them out because i was I usually work out with big motherboards and these ones they make the space very small so i took them out and i can put my motherboard on top of it so that it's even nearer the, the heat source so let me hook it up now and show you some of the features that you have to look out for. So you turn it on like this. And here you see it actually has two switches. This is for power and this is for heat and cool. You turn on the heat and set up this temperature. Like right now it's at 19 and it automatically adjusts and goes up until the set temperature that you want so right now it's set to 341 so it will go on increasing from 0 up to 200 up to 241 however it up, it actually goes up to 500 and you know 500 is very hot i don't think you would even find a motherboard that you need to use 500 so it goes up to 500 right now it's at 52 but i can still feel the heat you know uh, it's very very hot so let me get the motherboard and you try to remove that chipset using this one for a moment let me first shut it down so that you shall see how long it takes to heat up the motherboard from start up to the end so guys this is the motherboard and uh, when I was reorganizing it I realized that this chip was short and this is the north bridge of the chipset so we are going to try and change it let me first disconnect this processor so I'm going to first heat it I take out this rubber that holds the chipset on a motherboard then i'm going to use my other blower to heat it on top so that i can take it out so let me turn it on and i'm going to set the temperature at basically 200 is better and 
200 or 250 so actually I'm going to set it in 250 and we shall count how long it takes for for it to reach for it to reach 250 so right now it's in 250 it's at 97 let me apply flux so by the time you see flux melting you would know that the heat has already reached on top So it is at 178 right now. So let's wait until it reaches 250, then we can apply them the, the, the workstation. You know it is right now at 215, but the smoke is already coming out of the chip and you see let me let me show you here. You see right now what's happening down. I'm going to take out this rubber. You see it comes out very easily. Oh, that missed my eye. Now it looks to be hot, however, uh, the chip cannot come out. Let me get my blower and set it around 300. If you compare 250 down and the blower 300, that's almost 500. Well, it turns out that this motherboard is so hard that I expected. Now I'm going to increase the preheater temperature up to 280. You know, you can set this uh, preheat up to 400, but you know, when you set it up to 400, it's going to burn the components on at the bottom of this motherboard, and then you know, that's not what you want. You want to replace the chip and still use the motherboard. So, let me also increase the blower to 380. It is out. Oh. So the chipset is out. Let me re reduce and turn it off. I don't know if you can clearly see the chipset. All the soda balls have come up on it.
so you see the soda bowls are all clean let me also show you so these are the bowls on the chipset and you know they all came out very well none of them has been ripped off so let's replace it You know, the, the good thing with these BGA chips, uh, when you heat it up, they align themselves. Like right now, you see this one. And it's off in the, in, the, in the position. Right. So another thing I've seen from this good up now pretty down. At some point. Like right now. I think you can see. Okay, the numbers are good. The preheater is good. You've seen it can heat up a motherboard and can take out big chips without roasting anything on the motherboard. However, replacing such chips isn't efficient the preheater itself is good i know it can be effective in many circumstances like in a situation where you need to replace these ram slots it can help you very well and you know sometimes when you have laptops that are not displaying the issue is or is on the sometimes on the graphics card you know most of some laptops have got a graphics card that is on board and if you want to reflow that card using your preheater is a very effective way uh, if you're replacing EC you know this chip it usually gets fault a lot some people actually have broken hard drive connectors so this preheater is a good one you can have it around and it can help you so tell me your experience dealing with this preheater or with these big chips tell me in the comments and Maybe I can still also learn from you guys. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, you can subscribe. And if you have any question, you can comment. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.